I want to add some information about the Christian Huygens replica clock, help you making it work. Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to add some information on, on this clock here. I mixed up pounds and kilos and this is just a complement to the build video I already made on this clock. Uh, I'll put the link to the build video below. Okay, so, so let's look closely. What I mostly want to talk about is one thing, the escape man, how to set it up just at the right, the right distance, but also that those two angle gears, they need to be just right, not too far, not too close. There are three things that are important for the escapement. One is that the axis for the escape wheel and the axis for the anchor are square and that's with a carefully assembled frame. The second is to make sure that the escape wheel spins without warp. That I showed in the other video. And then the third one, that's the final touch. The escape wheel needs to be as close as possible to the anchor. And that's uh, sizing up the bushing with under the escape wheel. So that's all there is, setting up the escapement right. The height of the escape wheel is just to assure that both pallets escape without binding front and the back even with an even timing. And here is a view in slow motion of the pallets. You can see how the front and the back sets up an even rhythm to the clock. I took off the pendulum. By the way, this is 300 gram, the whole weight of the pendulum. And if I rewind, the clock should stop. And then the weight, the small weight, 850 grams. And the big weight, 3.5 kilo. Another thing to check while it's running like this is are both beats even? Here yeah, the difference. So somewhere in between. But that's that's not too bad. Another thing to check is I'm going to take the shaft for the anchor out. See if I can set up the anchor to the side. So with just the weight of the string here, I should be able to pull here and get the top to go. Let's have a look inside now. So I'm going to take, I'm going to take everything apart. See that bearing in the middle? I use one of those. It's a compression fitting. Uh, 316, you find those in the plumbing supplies. The other option is to find a brass tube. The inside diameter would be 5 and the outer diameter would be 7. So I want to focus on just these gears. And also see how I have three washers here. That's just the distance to have minimum play like this. Here it's important to check that you have some backlash and everywhere, all around. Just a little, not too much. And this is still a bit wobbly, so once you've once you think you're pretty right, just 
put the front frame again on. This will make it more stable and check again that you have no hot spot. So the, the position of the anchor here, it's given by this bushing here, this bushing here. When you go into your slicer setting, you can scale it up or down to make it a little bit longer or shorter. And I just made this simple, stuck a couple pieces of wood together and a piece of shaft that I can put together and check how they spin. Also showed on the other video how to true this up. Just one thing I didn't explain. You could have the tendency to do this and that wouldn't help with the teeth. I use a piece of wood to hold the file because that Make sure it's not going to move as the as you spin the gear. So use a piece piece of wood. It will hold steady. I found that other gear it has a bigger hole. I was trying to use this brass pushing, see if it made a difference. I'll give it a try. Okay, let's see what, how it works. I'm going to put the heavy weight first, and let it go all the way to the floor. I'm going to put the smaller weight. This is not working. <laughs> I'm, I messed up. One of the space. I forgot the spacer on this gear, and that's the one that belongs under the anchor. Don't do it like this. It might break it. This time it's working. I'm going to need to add more washers back here. There's too much play. Yeah. Put it back. It stops. Push it back in. It works. See, now it stops. Just push this in. It starts again. So back again, you need to undo the front, put it front, put the wash in. This time I think I have the distance right. Put that back. Okay, it's kicking. Pull the gear towards me, still work. Put all the way in, it works. Now I can put the face back. And let it go a little bit. Make sure it's working properly. And then you can put the panel on back. The pendulum has to have some weight, has 300 grams. That's just to keep tension in the string that's up here. Let's see. The 
king. And we can check the timing with this one. I know it's exactly one second. few tricks in this video and it will help you if you want to get this clock build and going and so have fun and if you like this please like subscribe and see you next time thank you for watching bye